Hi, my name is Jason. I'm from Metro Electronics, and I'm here with Aaron. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the AX DSPX and the AX DSPL product line uh, from Access Interfaces. And uh, really, what we want to put a lot of focus into uh, for this video, it's a two-part video. So the first part is going to be about product, uh, what it can do and how it can help you in the bay. The second video is going to be more of technical. So we're actually going to do an installation on a vehicle to show you just how easy installing the AX DSPX or the L is for uh, you as an installer or even a uh, do it yourself. So um, we've got some stuff laid out here on the counter and uh, we're going to get into it. And we're going to talk about uh, during this segment of the video, uh, not only the DSP, but the hurdles that installers run into with uh, working on some of the higher end vehicles uh, that have amplifiers built in. No. So we're going to show you the basically what the hard way to do an installation of aftermarket equipment versus the easier way with the new AX DSP products. Let's get started. Let's do it. So what Aaron and I have laid out on the table for you is an AX DSPX dash NIS one. And this is for Nissan vehicles. Um, and you know, Nissan vehicles, they are analog um, out of the factory radio. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's not a whole lot that um, you couldn't achieve with some of the other components that are out there. Correct. And again, this all goes back to, you know, your preference as the installer. But I can tell you what, what does make the job easier is that, you know, like you were saying earlier, is that the DSP replaces that factory amplifier. Much smaller location, much smaller footprint. So you can add in aftermarket equipment. Not only that, but... The party trick. Party trick, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, we offer amp bypasses as well. So these amp bypasses plug into the factory amplifiers connections, yep. and it gives you your front yeah, that's, outputs, that's your, your tweeter outputs, your sub outputs if it's there. No more getting undirected to find your pinouts. Exactly. This, is, this is it. That's you know, it. The, the hardest part of your labor is stamping down in wires. Yep, absolutely. You know, they're labeled in the instructions that we have here. They're labeled what colors are what. When what polarity as well, positive, negative. Um, and it just makes the installation just that much easier and quicker. Um, recently, I did one on a 2017 Fusion. I installed a DSP. It was actually the A to B um, interface, but um, I did an amp bypass harness. I did the plug and play A to B DSPX. Um, and the longest part of my install, the longest part of my install, was running the four gauge from the battery back to the trunk. There you go. That was it. That was, that took the longest because everything else here was plug, plug, plug. And then I took the outputs to my speaker wires, plugged them right into my aftermarket amplifier, and I was done. Yeah. And it was that easy. You know, obviously you still have setup and stuff like that, equalization, crossover points, everything else you can manage that DSP. That takes a little bit extra time. But as far as the installation goes, oh, yeah. it, it was simple. It was easy. So um, what I would like to point out here is that um, obviously we have power supply hooked up, um, is what comes with the DSP when you buy it. Like what's in the box, right? What's in the box? Um, so this is an unboxing with the box already unboxed. Yeah, it's already unboxed. <laughs> so uh, obviously it comes with your DSP. It comes with your vehicle specific harness. It comes with your output harness with in this in this case because it's an x 10 channels of output you've got your remote out uh it also comes with a base knob that you can install if you choose to right and what the base knob does is you know exactly what it says right attenuate Throw space. It in you can turn up the base you can turn down the base but you don't have to control it through that factory radio because a lot of factory radios they don't have a subwoofer control in the radio so we're including the base knob for you um now You'll notice, if you notice here, we have eight pin plug here. And this actually interrupts the, if this, the installation for this particular part is done at the head unit, Correct. okay? Um, and it in, interrupts the output signal of the factory radio. And um, it allows you to do a couple different things, okay? You leave it unplugged, 
if you're going to replace the entire system, okay? You're gonna add in new amplifier for your mids and highs. You're gonna add an amplifier in for your sub. You're gonna leave that unplugged, right? But let's say you have a customer that wants just to add a subwoofer, but they want that additional control, right? And so, they will. And they will, yeah. So what you can do in this case, you plug that in, now you can actually leave the factory amplifier inside the vehicle and it taps into the audio output of the radio of the OE radio into the DSP and it still gives you 10 channels of output yeah. full range of output so you can leave the factory amp in you can add a sub you can add in additional amplifiers you can add in additional speakers yeah that's, that's and that's... still keep the factory amplifier yeah, I'd say an advantage for your one piece at a time customer too. Say you start here just with a sub, mm -hmm. and eventually you can unplug this and get to that full system. That's right. So that's right. It does offer a lot of flexibility that way. Yeah. You know, and that's where um, the AX DSP X and the L, the light version, that's where we're different and unique from some of the other brands that are out there doing this type of stuff. Um, you know, we we offer the customer that ability or the installer that ability yeah. to either do it right in the beginning or plan for upgrades in the future. So, um, now, I know this is a Nissan harness, but let's talk about Chrysler, right? Chrysler, boy. There Chrysler are. vehicles, there you go. if you have a Chrysler T harness, and if it's a non-amplified Chrysler vehicle, as soon as it, you cut that speaker wire or this is not plugged in, there is no audio output from that radio whatsoever. And it's I mainly on the newer vehicles, right? I can't tell you how many calls we get in tech for that. Hey, I put this line output converter on. Now I ain't got no sound. Yep. Well, this, this is why. Coming up. So, um, you know, obviously we acknowledge that, right? We understand it. We know about it, which is why um, we have resistor pads that are pre-wired. And they're pre-wired to plug into our existing DSP harness. So let's say that you have that, um, you know, this speaker, it needs to see that load. So you're gonna plug this in. And again, this is a Nissan. This isn't really gonna apply to a Nissan, but you know, picture this being in theory, Chrysler. Yeah, in theory, this is this, this pretend and, Chrysler right now. Pretend Chrysler, yep. Um, and uh, so this resistor pad is gonna make that radio happy and it's gonna turn that audio back on. Right. And the reason why the, the audio shuts off is because the radio is trying to protect itself from damage. Right. So um, it thinks the speaker is shorted. Yeah. And because of that, it shuts down. This is um, actually this one too. So this is our uh, Ford uh, harness as well. This is an FD2. You'll notice it still has the same eight pin connector on it. So you can leave it connected or disconnected. Um, I will tell you that it does have an additional harness. And what this harness does, and why there's two wires coming off of it. This actually connects up to our DSP harness is because from the factory, from a lot of the factories out there, Ford, Chrysler, um, GM, you know, they don't have front left, front right, rear left, rear right channels anymore, yeah. if, especially if it's fixed level audio. Um, what they have is like, you know, front, front left, front right, fixed level audio signal, then Channel three is maybe Bluetooth prompts. Channel four is maybe navigation prompts. Yeah, center speaker. So, yeah, they, they have different, they use the output from the factory radio in different configurations to the input of that factory amplifier. So in this case, in the, in the case of the Ford, um, this 54 pin um, needed to be a T harness so that we could tap into the Bluetooth audio signal and feed it into our DSP so that when you plug in our DSP, you still retain the factory Bluetooth and people can still hear you, you can still hear them. Yeah. So, um, like I said, you know, the, in the development of this product, we've really uh, taken a look at what the customer is gonna need, what usability, what functions they want retained. And that's what we've, that's what we've done with a lot of our harnesses. So just like we have, Bypass for the Nissan amplifier bypass. We have amplifier bypasses for the Fords as well. Yeah. So um, this one, because there isn't any difference in wiring, uh, wiring configurations with a lot of these Sony radios, Sony 
amplified radios, factories, we went ahead and we labeled all of them for you. So rear center channel speaker, right speaker, left tweeter, all of that's labeled yeah. right here. So um, we even have sub channels. You know? And that. these are the wires that lead to the speakers. So these get plugged into the amp uh, and the plugs you removed from the amp. Yep. These actually go to your speakers. So truly, you could just take these ends if your amplifier is close enough and plug them into your amp. Mm -hmm. Plug them into your amp. Now you have audio signal. Yeah. So does make it a lot easier, a lot easier and a lot quicker to install. Yeah, and some cars like the Chrysler don't come with the bore and the blows. Like the Ford's got pretty decent factory speakers in it. If, if the customer, again, you're one piece in at a time, mm -hmm. get that DSP in there, get that crisp, clear sound they're looking for, maybe a sub, and then you do your door speakers and yeah. your deck and all that. Absolutely, so. absolutely. So, but it does give them that flexibility to get, you know, the sound that they want, maybe from the factory speakers until they have the cash or the money to yeah. you know, swap them out. So, um, so what we'll do now is uh, we've got, uh, like I said the, earlier, the power supply hooked up to the DSP. Obviously, we don't have any kind of input or output signal, but um, we're going to take a few minutes. I'm going to get the RTA set up, and uh, we're going to actually um, go through making changes on the app and the DSP so that they can see them on the RTA. And we've got an exciting new feature that was just added to the DS AX DSP XL app that uh, I think you guys would be really excited about. So I I'm can't certainly excited to, to show you. So, <laughs> all right. Absolutely. So we're gonna get all that set up um, and then uh, we'll get you right back in. <laughs> 